The Solidarity of Cows by Reed Beebe The cows woke Brennan that morning. She heard the cows mooing, unusual because the farmhouse was a good distance from their gated pasture. She looked down from her room's window, and despite the thick morning fog, she saw the cows in the yard, surrounding her dad's pickup truck. She went downstairs to tell dad, and saw that he was aware of the situation, drinking his coffee while looking out the kitchen window. Worst mistake a cattleman can make, he said, leaving a gate unlocked. I must have left it open last night. He turned to Brennan and smiled. I'll take care of it. Sorry they woke you. They've been acting strange lately, all this weird weather. It's all good. I need to do some homework anyway. Brennan's mom would pick her up that evening. Mom had left Brennan with Dad for the weekend while she visited her boyfriend in Branson. Brennan loved her dad, but she hated the isolation of the farm. No friends, no television, no signals, no cell phone or texting, no life. She was hoping to at least catch up on her schoolwork this weekend before Mom brought her back to the wonderful distractions at home. Dad went outside while Brennan started her report on Orwell's animal farm. The cows were mooing loudly, probably eager to get back to the feeding trough. After she finished the first draft of her report, she noticed the clock on the wall. Dad had been outside a while. Brennan looked out the window. With the fog, she could only see a few cattle near the house. One of the cows was sticking its neck over the horse pen, and Dad's horse Berlin did not like the intrusion, intimidating the cow to retreat. Having just read Animal Farm, Brennan imagined the two were having a heated political discussion. The clock ticked as the hours passed. With no cell coverage, Brennan tried the landline to call her mother, but the line was dead. The clock ticked along. She heard the cows mooing again and wondered how many were left in the herd. The long summer drought had driven up feed prices and Dad had to sell a lot of his cows to get through the winter. Worried about Dad, she put on her boots to go outside and looked for him. The air was chilly, but unseasonably warm for mid-January. Brendan's biology teacher was always going on about climate change and its impact on the ecosystem, but Brendan never paid much attention to him, or the news about all the strange environmental phenomenon going on around the world. If climate change meant she had less snow to shovel, she was all for it. Brennan called out for her dad, but got no answer. She couldn't see much, and she was getting scared. Heading back to the house, she realized that she was surrounded by cows. The cows were huge, and Brennan was always nervous around them. Thankfully, they were docile. Brennan could make out the number on the ear tag of the cow directly in front of her. Dad liked to give all the cows names, but... Brennan had never bothered to learn them. The cow's ear tag number was 13. Brennan remembered the cow from yesterday, when Dad pointed out that he had sold the cow's calf for slaughter. She had thought how unlucky that must be, to have tag number 13. Brennan tried to walk around the cow, but 13 moved towards her. The cows mooed at her, terrifying Brennan. She started to run away, but tripped and hit the ground hard. Her hands were bloody and hurting. She landed on the gravel driveway. Looking towards her legs, she could see what had tripped her. It was Dad's body. A pulpy red mass. 
Brennan screamed as the thirteen began to trample her, the cows mooing in unison, while the horse Berlin neighed his disappointment.